Okay, everyone strap yourselves in because today we're going to make Pong. I'm going to make a new project. You click on new, go project name, go Pong. So I'm going to right click in sprites, go to create, and then I'm going to click on sprite. And then I'm going to click in the workspace, I'm going to press Alt S. That also makes a sprite. Look at that. You just Look how much you've learned already. Two ways to make sprites. Uh, we're going to give each one a name this time. We're actually going to name things this time around. We're going to go on S player. And uh, the other one's going to be S ball. Um, so I'm going to go to size for the player. I'm going to change this to be 32 wide, uh, 128 tall. Uh, edit the image. I'm going to press F. Gives us the fill tool and just click. We get a nice big white rectangle. Close that. Only other thing to do with this is in this corner here where it says top left. Click on that. Go to middle center, okay, and you see this little little dot appears in the middle center. Uh, that's called the origin point, uh, very important. And then for the ball, we're going to resize this to be 32 by 32. Click apply, uh, edit image, just press F and click again to fill that. And again, set this to be the middle center, so the origin right in the middle there. Um, to actually make them do anything, we need objects, and they control all our logic. So I'm going to right-click in objects, go to create, uh, and click on object, and then I can also press Alt O to make another object. The first object I'm going to call O player, and I click on sprite and assign that to the S player sprite. Okay, and for the other one, we're going to put this on the ball sprite and call it O ball. O means object, and player means player, and O means object, and ball means ball. That's how we name it. And the same for the sprites. It's S means sprite, and ball means ball. You, you get the idea. Now, once you've done that, if you go to the little rooms category in the asset browser over here, you see we've got a room because you get a room by default. And by default, it'll be set to this really stupid resolution, 1366 by 768. We're going to change that to 640 by uh, 360. Then we're going to place those objects we just made. So I'm going to grab O ball, and I'm going to ju just click on it, and then hold Alt, and then it just makes it appear under my mouse. And I'm just going to click uh, and just make sure it's kind of, make sure it's like in the middle, right? Uh, we, you know, so the game's like like fair, so the other ball always starts in the middle, and then click on uh, O player, and we're going to do the same thing, and just place them either side, like that. Okay, if, I mean, if we, if we run that now, it'll, like, you know, it exists, there you go, we have something that already kind of looks a bit like Pong, but nothing moves or does anything, so, you know, we actually have to put some logic in to the game, so that, you know, it's it's a game. Um, so we're going to go to our player object, so just, like, double click on O player, it'll bring you back to this in the workspace, and then before we do anything else, we're going to go do variable definitions down here, fancy little tab, brings up this little window, and just allows us to define some definitions so that we can, like, distinguish one object we place in the room from another one, okay, so it lets us, like, change things about individual instances of objects that we place around by, by defining variables in here. So I'm going to click add, and I'm going to add a variable called player, and what this is going to represent is going to tell us, you know, which player is which. So remember in our room we've got two players, we want to know which one's player one, and which one's player two. And for programming reasons I'm going to refer to them as player zero and player one. You can do it as one and two if you want, just just, just don't worry about it, it's not important. Anyway, once you've done that, we can come to, uh, back to the room. Um, just double click on wh whichever one of these you want, really. Uh, we'll do this one and, and click on variables here. And you'll see this little thing comes up by default at zero. And click this button here to override it. I'm going to change that to one, okay? So then, then this one becomes player one. Or, uh, and this one over here, if you click on variables, you see that's player zero, okay? Player ID zero and player ID one. A way to think about it, all right? All right, then we're going to go back to uh, O player over here. And we're going to add uh, an event, okay? An event is just something that happens, okay? When you add an event, that's a thing happening. And then in your game, like, this object's just got made for the first time. It's been created. What should we do then? And then we, we put stuff in here to tell the game what to do when these things happen. That's how it works. That's that's how logic works in Game Maker. Events go off and then you do actions based on them. Alright, that's 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 pretty much all there is to it. Now the stuff everywhere is getting kind of messy because I'm going really fast. So I'm gonna click and make a new workspace, click close all but this, uh, press F twelve just to sort of, you know, really give us loads of space. We'll bring back the asset browser, click on O player, just so we just have this to look at for a second, just so it's a bit Anyway, like I said, uh, when the create event happens, that's just when when this when an instance of O player has just been made. All right, so the very start of our game, there's going to be uh, two players getting made. All right, and, and when that happens, we we can have stuff happen. All I want to happen is I'm going to set a variable called SPD to equal ten. All right, that just means from now on when we write the word SPD in our code we're effectively writing the number 10. Okay, and then we're going to add another event, we're going to add the step event. The step event happens every single frame of your game, okay? Uh, every game step, all right? Every game step, we do a bunch of logic, and then we draw the final picture of your game to the screen based on everything that's happened, all of our logic, all of our events and actions and all that good stuff, okay? We, we do a whole bunch, we do a whole game step, and then we draw stuff to the screen. That's how that's how video games work. So what we want to happen each frame with our player is we want to get our inputs. 
Okay, uh, we want to check to see if we're pressing up or down for whichever player in order to move the paddle up and down. But uh, it depends what player, right? So um, if it's player ID zero, first of all, so I'm going to write if open bracket player equals equals zero. All right, and I'm going to open and close a pair of these weird curly brace symbols. And uh, by opening a pair of these, what we do is we ask GameMaker the question. We say, is player that variable that we defined in our variable definitions, does that equal zero yes we write two equal signs when we're asking a question like this it's just just how it works okay and then if that's true we do whatever we write in here and if it's not true we don't do it and what we do if it is true is we're going to set another variable called move to equal keyboard check uh, vk down minus keyboard check uh, vk oh, i can't type vk up no, it's like, oh, oh my god, there's so much code, oh, you, you lost me, I don't understand, right? Well, again, what we're doing is we're setting this word to just mean a thing. And what it's going to mean is the result of um, a, a couple of, of a little bit of maths, basically. Uh, we, by writing this, this here is going to give us a 1 or a 0, depending on whether or not we're pressing the down key. And this will give us a 1 or a 0, depending on whether or not we're pressing the up key. Therefore, by subtracting the second one from the first one, uh, what that means is move is going to end up either equaling 1, if we're trying to move down, uh, minus 1 if we're trying to move up, and it'll equal 0 if we're either pressing both keys or neither key. All right, It's just handy because it means it covers the case of us pressing both keys. Anyway, now we've written that, we need to know the inputs for the other player. So we're going to write if uh, player equals uh, 1 instead. So if it's player ID 1, or rather you know player 2 or whatever in this instance. I'm just going to copy this line of code here. Um, obviously we can't use the same keys, uh, so I'm going to change VK down to be ORD in bracket, um, quotation mark, uh, S, uh, quotation mark, close bracket, all right? And <laughs> this weird little command here, I don't know why it's called ORD, I don't actually know what that stands for, but that just gets like the key code of a particular key. Again, how did I know that? Well, it's because I, you know, I, I wanted to know how that works. I read the keyboard section of the manual and it told me, right? <laughs> That's how I worked that out. And then I copy that, and I'm going to paste it into here, and I'm going to change that S to a W. Anyway, uh, now we know um, whether or not we're trying to move up or down, right? It's stored in here. It'll be 1 if we want to move down, or it's going to be minus 1 if we want to move up, or 0 if we don't at all. So what do we do with that? Well, we move our Y coordinate, 2D space. X is like your horizontal position, Y is vertical. So we're going to do Y equals uh, itself, so whatever it is currently, plus um, open bracket move times space. Uh, SPD. You remember SPD from our create event, it, equal, it means 10, right? So that's just our speed. So we're going to move 10 either um, downwards, uh, as, as you increase in Y, you go further downwards, or we're going to times it by minus 1 if we're going up, so minus 10. So that will reduce our Y and we'll go in the other direction. If you just like run the game now, um, you'll be able to do it. You, look, there we go. We've got like half of Pong like already. Like That's just, just the controls. You might have noticed we can like go off the screen uh, with that. It's obviously not ideal. I'm just going to fix that real quick. I'm just going to copy and paste in some like a bit of code that just fixes that. Um, <laughs> because I don't want to have to go into what all these things mean. Again, like another thing you can do with code, by the way, you can middle click on a thing and it'll actually bring up the manual on that thing. Very, very useful while you're trying to learn stuff. And then if we run that just to show you real quick, um, I can't move off the top or the bottom of the screen anymore on either player. All right, so now we just got to deal with the ball. So let's uh, close that. We'll double click on O ball. And uh, we don't have anything in O ball. We're going to add the create event first of all. And uh, I'm going to give, uh, we're going to assign the H speed of the ball. And you see that turns green. That's another built in thing of the, the instance, right? Um, so what H speed is, it's just like horizontal speed. If you set any number in here, it'll just be a horizontal speed. It's just like the amount that this object will just tr travel like forever along the X axis, right? So we want it to either like just move to the right by 10 or, or move the other way by 10 to start with. So I'm just going to write choose open bracket 10 uh, minus 10. What that does is it's just going to pick randomly between uh, these two things. If we run the game now, we'll, we'll see that happens. So it's like, like we'll see it like it moved to the to the right that time. If I run it again, oh, it moves to the right that time. Oh, actually, we, we didn't do randomize, actually. Oh, I'm going to type randomize over here. That just like randomizes the internal random seed. That just means it can actually like give us a, a random result. 
uh, every time. So yeah, <laughs> you can see it's actually different. Then we're gonna add uh, the step event. Okay, again, this is the thing that happens every single frame. First of all, I'm gonna make sure if it touches the top or bottom of the screen that it um like bounces and goes the other way. So I'm gonna say if bbox underscore bottom greater than room underscore height. Okay, so if the bottom of our bounding box would go off the bottom of the screen or open bracket uh, bbox top, I'm just going to full screen this so we can kind of see what we're doing. Uh, if bbox top, so the top of our bounding box would go below zero. Um, and so if either of these things are true, right, so if either one of these things is about to be true, I'm going to take our vertical speed, our v speed, uh, and we're going to set it to minus itself. All right, so v speed equals negative v speed. So if we're like going down at a speed of like uh, five and we go off the bottom of the screen, then it's going to change it to minus five. I'm going to come back up. If we go off the top of the screen at minus seven, that's going to change it to seven and we're going to come back down. Okay, then while we're in here, I'll show you a new way to add events. When you're in the full screen code editor, I can right click, go to add open event and we can add events from in here. So I'm going to go down to uh, collision, go to objects and uh, o click on O player. Okay, so this event is the an O player collision event. So it's going to happen if O ball ever collides with O player. So if this happens, I'm going to write if uh, x is less than room width times 0.5, uh, and uh, oh, you can write that symbol, or you can just write the word. At. I'll, I'll stick with the word and it's simpler, right? Uh, and h speed uh, less than or equal to zero. And then I'm going to write or underneath this so or x is greater than room width times uh, 0.5 and h speed is greater than or equal to zero so if all this is true which means you know our, uh, we're on the left hand side of the screen uh, moving to the left or uh, all this is true which means we're on the right hand side of the screen and we're moving to the right that means all we need to do uh, is flip our horizontal speed we just take h speed um, equals uh, minus h speed all right and then regardless if we have a collision with the player we'll um we'll randomize our, our vertical speed a little bit just to, you know, to do something so uh, we'll set v speed to equal random range uh minus five to five all right and i'll just give us a random number between uh minus five and five whereas choose gave us one or the other this gives us between minus five and five all right and i'm just going to run the game that and we'll should see uh the, there we go we basically have pong i mean it doesn't get any harder than that uh so one thing we could do just make it a bit more interesting is uh every time the horizontal speed like flips we can just uh times it by uh 1.05 all right so it just like gets slightly faster uh every single time uh it, it, it hits here and it'll like you know just eventually uh, probably eventually be oh, it's quite hard playing this with you, yourself actually oh, oh there you go and then i don't know in order to round it all off i could just add the um other like outside room event so if the object ever like just fully goes outside the room um we can just do like game r restart and there you go so if like the thing goes out of the room entirely you can see that yeah the, the whole game just kind of, kind of restarts there you go you may pong it it's, it's, it's not perfect like some of the collisions and stuff are gonna be a bit be a bit weird sometimes and so on but you know we wrote it in about like two seconds and hopefully that got across some of like the basics of how like like writing logic and and code and stuff works in game maker like don't be afraid of code and it's you know it's you just learn a little bit of it at a time and you know you, you don't ever need to like master it or anything like that you just need you just learn a little bit and you, you can do a lot with a little you can do a lot with a little as we've hopefully shown today hope that was helpful guys thank you very much for watching i usually make tutorials that are a bit more like thorough and slower based than this um if you're interested in that you can maybe subscribe if you want or i don't know watch some of these other videos or uh, support me on patreon or uh, do whatever you want you know how to use youtube either way whatever you want to do i hope you're having a good time and uh, hopefully i'll see you again soon all right cheers guys catch you all next time